Okay, so again, I welcome all of you to this section of uh, thermal engineering. Let me see <clears throat> for MC551. Now, uh, we have already started with convection, and this is the last chapter for the semester. And uh, we today I'm going to look at only solving questions, okay, related to convection. I think the last time we met, we have already uh, discussed the first exercise. Okay, this has already been covered. So today I will look at the second one. Okay, and then the third, and then also we have another portion also. So this is a pass here question. Okay. So I will begin with the second question. So in this question, we are told that develop the combustion equation and determine the F word ratio for the complete combustion of N-butane. So N-butane has been given as the fuel. Okay, so we have to develop the combustion equation and again determine the F for ratio for the complete combustion of N-butane with theoretical amount of air. Okay, and then the second one, B part, with 50% excess air. Okay, now in this question, before we start this question, we have to know that the fundamental equation related to the fuel, okay, combustion situation, need to be, uh, what do you call it? It has to be balanced. You have to write down the equation and balance the equation. Okay, basically, uh, the equation is related to the combustion of this fuel when in the presence of air. And last week, we did talk about stoichiometric. Stoichiometric. Stoichiometric amount of air. So stoichiometric amount of air is the amount of is the amount of air which is necessary for the complete combustion. Complete combustion of what? Of a fuel. Complete combustion of a fuel. It is also known as theoretical theoretical amount amount of air, theoretical amount of air. Or, alternatively, sometimes it is called 100% theoretical amount of air, or 100%, 100% amount, theoretical amount of air. Theoretical amount, amount of air. Okay, so in order to establish the equation, we are told n butane, which is C for H10, okay, is being combusted. So now we need to write down the stoichiometric equation. A okay. stoichiometric equation for this fuel is we have the fuel which is C4 H what H8 plus a certain amount of air so by that air we don't know oh sorry so C4 H10 so it is C4 H10 
This is supposed to be so this is supposed to be C for H ten H ten. I'm writing it. Okay, plus some amount of air. So the air, we don't know its exact stoichiometric amount. So we represent it by this. And we know that for each mole of air, sorry, uh, for the composition of air is that for one kilomole of oxygen, there will be 3.76 kilomoles of nitrogen that will pass the speed in the reaction, okay? So then the product of combustion. So now, stoichiometric equation is the same as complete combustion. So in complete combustion, I've told you that uh, all the carbon is converted into carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, hydrogen is converted into, into water, okay? So this is an indication of a uh, complete combustion situation. Okay, so let's see. So H10. All right, so we have H2O, which is the water. Then there will be and some amount of nitrogen. So the nitrogen comes in and then it goes out unreacted. So plus some amount of nitrogen over here. So if you look carefully, the equation is not balanced. So first thing is that we need to balance this equation. How do we balance? Since we don't know the number of moles of carbon dioxide, which is formed at the product side, we represent this by X. We don't know how much mole of nitrogen uh, water is formed. We represent it by, let's say, Z. And then how much nitrogen is formed? We represent it by K or any other uh, parameter. So first thing is to balance, balance the components. Components in the reactants. So we look at carbon. So we have carbon <clears throat> is four over here, four atoms of carbon, so four. Okay, so then this plus, yes, there is no carbon over here. So it should be equal to X, X amount of carbon. See, X, C. So means that x equals to 4, right? And then we will have a balancing of hydrogen. Okay, in the hydrogen we have 10 atoms of hydrogen. That gives us 2 times z. So z times 2. Okay, so this implies that z equals to 5. Okay, and then we will balance the oxygen. So balancing the oxygen gives us, we have A. This term means the theoretical amount of air, okay, which is needed, needed for the complete combustion of the fuel. So now times, we have two moles of two atoms of oxygen over here, so times two. Okay, so now this gives me uh, at the product side equals to 2x plus z. Okay, so 2x plus z. Now we will have 
uh, over here z equals to 5. All right? And x equals to 4. So this gives me 8 plus what? Plus 5. And that gives us 13. So now ATH equals to 13 divided by 2. And that gives us what? 6.5. All right? So now let us balance the nitrogen. Balancing of nitrogen gives us Again, this parameter will multiply the nitrogen. So we have A, T, H, that is the theoretical amount of air required, times 3.76 times 2. This should give me, uh, this should give me, let's say, 2K. Okay, so 2 will cancel 2 over here. So eventually, we know this value already, 6.5. Okay, so we have 6.5 times, times uh, 3.76 equals to K. So eventually, K, sorry, K equals to, uh, let's see over here, <clears throat> 3.76. 76 times 6.5. So, <clears throat> so that gives us about 24.4. Okay, so let me cross check. 3.76 times 6.5. Yes, 24.44. Okay, so this gives us 24.44. So with this information now, we can write down the general equation for the stoichiometric equation. Okay, so now we'll have, uh, we have the fuel is given by C4. C4 H10 plus 6.5 uh, and then we have oxygen plus 3.76 moles of nitrogen okay so we have nitrogen here This should give me x mole, so x equals to 4 of carbon dioxide plus water. So what was our z? z was equals to 5, 5 moles of water. So we have 5 moles of water. And then finally, 24.44 most of what? Nitrogen. Okay, so this is the stoichiometric equation which is required. So the stoichiometric equation, the final equation, okay, so for a complete combustion situation. All right? So now, and the question says we should develop the combustion equation and determine the F1 ratio. Okay, A for theoretical air, okay? So now we need to determine the air fuel ratio for first, for this theoretical air. Then next we will find the air fuel ratio for 50% uh, excess air, all right? So now uh, for theoretical amount of air, okay, air fuel ratio, let's say air fuel ratio, equals to mass mass of air divided by mass of fuel okay so now this gives me carefully we have like i've told you 6.5 moles this is the stoichiometric amount 
of air that is present. We need to multiply by, here we have, we have this one mole of oxygen plus 3.76 moles of nitrogen. So that gives us 4.76 moles of what? Air. You understand? So now this equation gives us 6.5 times 4.76, okay, 4.76 kilomole of the air times the molecular mass. So molecular mass of air is 29, okay, 29 kilogram per kilomole, all divided by mass flow rate of the, oh sorry, mass of the fuel. A mass of the fuel, you see, we have only one kilomole. So we will write over here, one kilomole of the fuel times the molecular mass of the fuel. Molecular mass of the fuel, we have four atoms of carbon and 10 atoms of oxygen. So it's going to give us, each atom of carbon is 12. Okay, so we have four, times 12 plus, okay, the atomic mass of hydrogen is one, so but they are 10, so we get 10, okay, all of this in kilomole, okay, so, okay, so this gives us kilogram per kilomole, all right, so now, uh, if you calculate all this carefully, you eventually get the F where it should to be 15.5 kilogram of air per kilogram of per kilogram of what? Of fuel. Okay. So this is the F where ratio. So the next question is to determine the F where ratio for. 50% excess air. Okay, for 50% excess air. So B part, let's see, B part, 50% excess air. So this implies that 50% excess air is equal to 150 percent theoretical air 150 percent theoretical air okay so just like zero percent excess air equals to 100 percent theoretical air theoretical air so that if I have 20% excess air, it's going to be give 120% theoretical air. Okay. So now we're going to write, rewrite this equation. Taking into consideration the 150% excess air. Okay. So now 150% excess air gives us 150. So 150 percent excess air equals to 150 divided by uh, 100. That gives us 1.5. Okay, so this 1.5, we are going to multiply by this 6.5. Okay, so we will have the next equation is going to be like this. The equation for 150% excess air is going to give us C4H10 plus, now we are going to consider this. So 1.5 times 6.5. And then we have oxygen 
plus what? Nitrogen. So 3.76 moles of nitrogen. This gives me... Now, uh, here at the product side, you see, there are so many ways of writing the equations for the product side. What we are going to do is like this. I'll show you one thing. We are going to repeat whatever we have calculated for carbon dioxide. We'll repeat whatever we have calculated for nitrogen. Okay. So now this is going to give me we'll have four moles, four kilomoles of carbon dioxide plus five kilomoles of water okay then what about the nitrogen so the nitrogen i've told you it always come into the reactant and then goes out so we will have plus you see 1.5 that gives us 1.5 times 6.5 Okay, and then times 3.76 kilomoles of nitrogen. Okay, so that gives us, uh, let's see, 1.5 times 6.5, okay, times 3.76 times 2. Okay, oh, sorry. Yeah, so time only 3.76, all right, of nitrogen. Of nitrogen. So this is as N2. Okay, so then plus oxygen. Now this oxygen is the excess air. If you don't bring this oxygen, then it means that this equation does not conform with the method of excess air, 50% excess air. So we need to bring the oxygen. It means that some amount of oxygen will be, at the product will be given out. Okay, but we don't know how much more of oxygen is given out at the product. So we represent that by, let's say, X or we represent by a different parameter like this. So, so XSL, let's say we represent it by P like this. So it is our duty now to determine the value for P. Okay, so now we'll just have to balance the oxygen. So balancing of oxygen, okay, maybe I should write all the equation over here again. Uh, let's see, C4, C4, H10 plus 1.5 times 6.5 oxygen plus 3.76 nitrogen this gives us four moles of carbon dioxide plus five moles of water plus then we have 15 5 1.5 6.5 3.76 Okay, 1.5 times 6.5, okay, times 3.76 of nitrogen plus P moles of oxygen. Okay, so now we need to balance oxygen. Balance oxygen. So now we will have here at the reactant site, 
1.5 times 6.5, sorry, Okay, 6.5 times, again, we will have uh, times 2, because of these two atoms of oxygen. So this gives us, at the product side, 4 times 2, that is for the carbon dioxide, plus 5 times one in the water, we have oxygen also, plus two P, all right? So eventually we'll have, and uh, let's see, what is the result for this? So 1.5 times 6.5, okay, times two. 19.5 so we have 19.5 equals to this is 8 plus 5 13 13 plus 2p 2p so eventually we will have uh, minus 13 so that gives us 6.5 so 6.5 equals to 2p. So p equals to divided by 2. 3.25. 3.25. Okay. And that is the number of moles of oxygen that is present. So we will have... Now we need to write down the whole equation again. All right. So like this. So C4... H10 plus, and uh, this one gives us 9.75. If you multiply this, 9.75. Okay, so Okay, 9.75 moles of, of air, this is oxygen, 3.76 of nitrogen. So this gives us 4 of carbon dioxide, 5 moles of water, and then plus, and the car, nitrogen gives us 1. Five, let's see, times six point five times three point seven five. So thirty six point five six. So we have thirty six, thirty six point five six, or let's say thirty six point six. 36.6, okay, approximately, of nitrogen. Then we have the oxygen. So oxygen P is 3.25 P, oh, sorry, of oxygen. Okay. Now, from this, we can calculate the F well ratio again. Okay, so F well ratio for the uh, XX. Okay, so now uh, this is what we call F well ratio for actual actual amount of air. Okay, so this gives us mass flow rate of air divided by mass flow rate of fuel. Okay. So eventually that gives us, you have, uh, as usual, 
9.75 moles of air, kilomoles of air. Okay, times 29, which is the molar mass, kilogram per kilomole, all divided by, we have one kilomole of the fuel, so one kilomole of the fuel. And then again, as usual, it's going to give us times we have four atoms of the carbon times 12 plus 10. That is for the hydrogen. Okay, kilogram per kilo mole. Now, if we calculate all this correctly, this gives us F4 ratio equals to 23.2 kilogram of air per kilogram of fuel, okay? So this is the, uh, the result for this particular question, okay? So let us move on to the third one, the third example, or the third exercise, okay? So let me copy the question. Yes, so in this question as well, we are told to uh, that propane is burned with 61% excess air, okay, which enters a combustion chamber at 25 degrees Celsius. Assuming complete combustion, okay, and total pressure of one atmospheric pressure. Now, determine the air fuel ratio, okay? Then the percentage of carbon dioxide by volume in the product. And then the dew point temperature of the product. Okay. So, for this particular question, we, it's a bit different from what we have discussed earlier on, okay? So what we need to do also, um, we need to write down the equation, okay, for the combustion situation, all right? And then we have to uh, know that you have to determine the F4 ratio and then the dew point temperature, okay, for this uh, particular question. Now, uh, we have C3, H8, So now uh, we have to also consider the fact that we have 61% excess air, okay, in the question. So this has to be considered. So first thing is, again, we need to write down the stoichiometric equation, okay, theoretical or stoichiometric equation. So first write down um, stoichiometric Combustion equation. 
needs to be written down. So we have C3, H8, all right, plus, again, some amount of air, which we do not know, oxygen, 3.76 of nitrogen. This gives us carbon dioxide plus water plus nitrogen. These are the conditions for a complete combustion. Okay. For a complete combustion, all the carbon is converted into carbon dioxide. Okay, hydrogen is converted into water, and then nitrogen is still nitrogen. Okay, nitrogen does not react in the combustion, so we leave it like that. All right, so now we need to balance the equation. Again, here, first we start with carbon. Okay, carbon over here. So we have three atoms of carbon, gives us, now, we don't know the number of moles of Ox, uh, sorry, carbon dioxide. Let's represent by X. Let's give this Y. And let's give this Z. All right? So X equals to 3. And for hydrogen, we have 8 equals to 2Y. So Y equals to 4. And now oxygen. So now for oxygen, we have ATH. Okay, so there's the theoretical or stoichiometric amount of air times two. All right, so this gives me, we have two atoms of oxygen at the right hand side for carbon dioxide. So this gives me 2X plus, again, one mole of one atom of carbon, oh, sorry, oxygen are there for water. So plus Y. All right. So now we we'll have, we know X equals to 3, Y equals to 4. So this gives us 8, sorry, uh, 3, this gives us 12, oh, sorry, 6. So this gives me 6, 6 plus uh, y, which is 4. This is me 10. So eventually, the stoichiometric amount equals to 5. Now we need to balance the last part, which is nitrogen. For nitrogen, we will have the uh, same thing, ATH times 3.76 times 2 equals to 2z. Okay, 2 will cancel out over here. We know the theoretical amount of air to be 5. So we have 5 times 3.76. So 5 times 3.76. So that gives us 18.8. .8. So Z equals to 18.8. Sorry. Z equals to 18.8. Okay, so now we will write down the overall equation for the stoichiometric. All right? So now we have C3, H8 plus 5 oxygen plus 3.76 nitrogen. This gives me carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is 3. Now 3 atoms of carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is 3, 
CO2 plus uh, water, water y, y equals to 4. So y equals to 4 moles of water. And then plus nitrogen, 18.8. So that gives us 18.8. Right, so this is the equation for the stoichiometric. Now, uh, we need to determine the 61% excess air. Okay, so because the, we are told the fuel is bent with 61% excess air. Okay, so now for this situation, if we have to determine the Let's say the air fuel ratio. Okay, so we have to first a plus a over here. So sixty one percent excess air equals to one six one percent. Theoretical air. Uh, all right. So, and this equals to 1.61. So, we will multiply this 1.61 by the amount of air that we have at the reactant site. Okay, we'll multiply by this one. And then we'll multiply by, oh, sorry, I've neglected. Here we have nitrogen. And then we'll multiply by the, nitro, the nitrogen as well. So, but all other, uh, this thing will remain the same like that. So we have C3H8 plus 1.61 times 5. Then we have oxygen plus 3.76 nitrogen. This gives us 3 of carbon dioxide plus 4 moles of water plus. Now we will have uh, 5 times 3.76, okay, so this gives us, we'll have, okay, so, 1.61 times, 1.61 times 3.76, 76, 3.76, okay, of nitrogen, okay, so then we'll have at the product, there will be oxygen also available at the product, so then we don't know how much more of oxygen, so we represent it by, let's say, K, so now we need to determine the value for this oxygen. Okay. So in determining the value for the oxygen, we need to first balance the equation for the oxygen. So we have oxygen balance. This gives me this quantity. So 1.61 times 5 okay, times 2 equals to 3 times 2. That is for carbon dioxide plus 4 for water. 
and then plus 2k for oxygen itself. So this gives us 16 point one, 16.1 equals to six plus this 10, okay, plus 2K, plus 2K. So eventually you will have 6.1 equals to 2K. So K equals to about three point something. Okay. Three point zero five. Okay. So with this in mind, we can write down the overall equation again for this situation. And then we will determine the F were ratio. Okay, so we will have C3, sorry, C3 H8 So we have C3 C3 H8 plus and uh, 16 point one of oxygen plus 3.76 of nitrogen. So this gives me three carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide plus water and then for nitrogen we will have 30.27 so let's see so I forgot to multiply by by 5 over here so 1.6 times 7 so I should multiply this also by 5 sorry so let me delete In this section so times 5 times 5 okay so and uh, five times three point seven six times one point uh, one point six one. So that gives us plus uh, eventually gives us thirty point two seven. Thirty point two seven of nitrogen. Okay, so now we have to find the F four ratio. So F four ratio for this actual combustion gives us mass flow rate or mass of air divided by mass of fuel. So this gives me. 8 point let me see 12 half 1 point let me see cross check something over here so 5 times 2 
times one of the point six one times so okay so we have uh, the mass molecular mass of the fuel is this okay so the more number of moles of the of the air that participate in the reaction is this okay so you have 16 and i think there is a mistake here let me check um, here we have 1.6 1.61 1 Okay, times five. Okay, and then times two. Okay, so then we will have. Let me see. There is something wrong, so I'm cross-checking the answer again. So here I have two times three, yes, for all carbon dioxide, four for water, and then two K okay, for this. So then I have six K okay, plus four, ten, two K. Okay, so this gives me sixteen point one minus ten, six point one K is equal to this. All right, so now uh, after we have determined our stoichiometry for excess air, we multiply by five. <coughs> <coughs> so I made a mistake over here. <coughs> And it's supposed to be yes so so this is supposed to be <clears throat> 1 1.5 1 1.61 1 times 5 okay so 1.61 1 times 5 so that gives us 8.05. So 8.005. Okay. Yes. So this will be the final equation now. And now from here, the air fuel ratio equals to mass of air divided by mass of fuel. And this gives me uh, 8.05. 0.5 kilomoles of the fuel, sorry, of the air, times the molecular mass. Okay, so this times 4.76 kilomole times the molar mass. So 29 kilogram per kilomole, all divided by that of the fuel. So we have one kilomole of the fuel, one kilomole times, we have three atoms of carbon, so three, and carbon is 12, three times 12 plus eight of nitrogen, sorry, hydrogen. Then this is kilogram per kilo mole. Now the air fuel ratio, if you calculate carefully, this gives me twenty-five point three kilogram of air per kilogram of fuel. Okay, so this gives us the result for this. Now the B part, in the B part, we are told to determine 
the percentage of carbon dioxide by volume in the product. Okay, so let's write the whole equation again. We have C3 H8 plus 8.05 of oxygen plus 3.76 nitrogen. This gives me carbon dioxide. Three water is four. Water is four plus nitrogen thirty point two seven of nitrogen. Okay. To seven of nitrogen. So I made a mistake over here. So I I have not I did not put the information for the oxygen. Okay, so we have to consider the oxygen as well, which we have not uh, added. So oxygen is also participating in the reaction. So that this gives me plus, plus what? 3.05 kilomole of oxygen. Okay. So now, uh, let me see. Okay, so now we'll have plus 3.05 kilomole of oxygen. So we want to find the percentage by volume, okay, of carbon dioxide present in the product. First thing we should know is that uh, when we say percentage, is the same as the volume fraction or mole fraction. Okay, so mole fraction I have defined like this: mole fraction is given by y i equals to n i divided by total number of moles. Okay, similarly, uh, here I want to find the percentage of carbon dioxide by volume, volume fraction. They are synonymous. Okay, so uh, we can express it like this, that if we know this is the same as the volume, I'll say, sorry, volume occupied so volume occupied by a particular element divided by the total volume. But here we don't have information about the volume, but we know information about the moles. So I'm going to express them in terms of mole instead. Okay, so we want to find the percentage, percentage of carbon dioxide in the product. Okay, percentage of carbon dioxide in product. We know that the number of moles or the mole fraction the number of moles of carbon dioxide in the product equals to 3. All right? And then the total number of moles equals to total number of moles in the product equals to 3 plus 4 plus 30.27 plus 3.05.
Okay. So this gives me 40 point what? Point three two. Okay. So that the mole fraction of carbon dioxide equals to three divided by 40.32. So this gives us 0 0.074. And this is the same as the volume fraction. Okay? This is the same as volume fraction. Okay? Of carbon dioxide. So this is the same as volume fraction of carbon dioxide. So in percentage, this equals to 7.4% of volume fraction. OK. So I hope everybody is understanding what we are doing. Now the next thing is to find the <clears throat> The dew point temperature. Dew point temperature of the product. Dew point temperature of the product. Okay? So when we say dew point temperature, is the same as the T saturation. Let me highlight, let's say, if I have on a T... V diagram or TS diagram, TV diagram, like this. On a TV diagram, this is what we call a constant pressure line. And this state corresponds to T saturation. All right. So if I have a fluid over here, this region corresponds to what? Superheated. Super what? Heated region. If I continue to move downwards, so it means the temperature is decreasing. So if it reaches here, this region is called saturated vapor state. Saturated vapor state. Any further cooling, in this region, the temperature is going to remain stuck at that point. Instead, there will be condensation. And this condensation is the same as dew, dew point. All right. So that if we know the, this particular pressure, we can easily determine its saturation pressure. Sorry, its saturation temperature. For example, if this is if we have water whose pressure equals to 100 kilopascal. So definitely, the saturation temperature, the saturation at 100 kilopascal is approximately 100 degrees Celsius. So if we are able to know the operating pressure for the water, then we easily we can find the saturation temperature. Okay. So one thing we need to know is that in combustion situations, okay, so all these elements that are participating in the reaction, water is the only water is the only product which undergoes condensation. Okay. So oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, they remain as gases. So we need to find the partial pressure, partial pressure of the water. If you are able to find the partial pressure of the water, then we can easily find the saturation, its saturation temperature. All right? So that, again, by definition, partial pressure, Okay, so 
the number of anyway the number of moles number of moles of water in the product equals to four right okay so now mole fraction of water equals to number of moles of water number of moles So number of moles of water or the mole fraction of water is given by the number of moles of water divided by total number of moles. And this again equals to the partial pressure of water divided by the total pressure in the system. Okay. So, you see, all these things, they are interconnected in this way. According to this question, we can easily determine the mole fraction of water. So, if you get a mole fraction for water, we easily equate to this. We know total pressure, P total, equals to 101 point what three two kilopascal that's the total pressure so then we can easily find the partial pressure from there okay so let's move ahead so mole fraction for water gives us the number of moles of water in the product is what four divided by total number of moles total number of moles is 40 40.32 Okay, so now <clears throat> we need to equate this to the partial pressure of water divided by total pressure, 101.32. Okay, so eventually the pressure exerted by the water in the mixture or the product is 10.5. 10.05 kilo pascal. All right? So eventually now, uh, to find a dew point now, T saturation at, okay, 10 point. 0 0.5, I'll say at 10 kilopascal approximately, equals to T dew point, dew point temperature. And if you look from the property table, you get 45.8 degree Celsius. Okay, so this brings us to the end of this particular question. Okay, and uh, I would like to stop over here. Okay, if there is any question, we can discuss now. Okay, so I'll attend to the next question in the next class. Right? So, any questions so far? Okay, so somebody was asking. Okay, so I think I was not paying attention to this question. So 1.61 times, yes, I think I've done the correction already. So 1.61 times 5. Somebody was giving a question over here. Ahmed. Uh, Shamir. Okay, so 
Shamil, now is it understood? Is it okay? And then Nur, Han, Nur Hanani. So is it understood now? Okay. So Alhamdulillah. Okay. So now, uh, if there is no question, I think we will end our discussion over here.